The squeeze theorem is a simple and powerful theorem to determine the limit of a function that is bounded by two functions that have the same limit at a point. And so if we consider three functions, f, g, and h, defined on an interval i such that for any x in that interval, h is bounded by f and g, in other words, f of x is less than or equal to h of x, which is less than or equal to g of x, and in addition, f and g have the same limit at x naught, namely the limit of f of x as x approaches x naught is equal to the limit of g of x as x approaches x naught, call it L, then f of x has a limit L, g of x has a limit L, and h has no choice but to have the same limit. And so then we'll have that the limit as x approaches x naught of h of x is equal to L. And graphically, it's actually pretty easy to visualize because if we have a function f that has a limit L at x naught, and that is going to be such that g is always above f, well, the graph of g is always above the graph of f, but g also has a limit L at x naught, then the function h that lives in between f and g has no choice. At x naught, it has to squeeze through that point and have a limit L. And so h might look something like this, where it is always in between f and g, but at x naught, it has to have a limit of L. So let's do a very simple example here, where there's a bit of hand-holding because we don't yet know how to derive this double inequality. At some point, we will be able to do that, and it's actually a classic question. But for now, let's consider f of x is cosine x, g of x is simply one constant function, h of x is sine x over x. And we would like to find the limit of sine x over x, given that for any x in the interval minus 2, 2, cosine x is less than or equal to sine x over x, which is less than or equal to 1. And so the functions are arranged such that h is bounded by cosine x and 1. In addition, at 0, cosine of x is going to have a limit that is equal to 1. 1, of course, has a limit of 1, and so we anticipate that sine of x over x is going to have a limit of 1. And so what we would need to do is argue that the limit of cosine of x as x approaches 0 is equal to 1, and of course the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 is equal to 1. That's a bit overkill, but nonetheless true. And so by the squeeze theorem, the limit of sine of x over x as x approaches 0 is equal to 1, which we might not have anticipated. And again, it's a more interesting example if you actually have to establish this on your own before you come to the conclusion that the limit of sine of x over x is 1, but we don't know how to do that yet. And we'll learn how to do that, and we'll do problems where we have to establish double inequalities like this. But assuming that we have that, then all we have to do is argue that cosine of x and 1 both have the same limit of 1 as x approaches 0, and therefore so too does sine x over x. And if we want to visualize this to be convinced, here we have the different graphs. This is cosine of x, this is g of x, of course h is stuck in between the two, and therefore has no choice but to go through this point right here as x approaches 0, and therefore the limit of sine x over x as x approaches 0 is equal to 1. Thanks for watching this video. At Congress Academy, we create custom study guides so that you don't have to. Send us your syllabus and some old exams, and we'll put together lecture notes, practice problems with step-by-step -step solutions, and classic exam questions so that you don't waste your time. All you have to do is log in and focus on studying what matters most. And if you have questions, we're available to help. 
If you'd like to learn more about how Calgary's Academy can help you do well, check us out at calgarysacademy.com. We look forward to helping you. See you there.